any difference in how traditional medicine embraces sort of that more of a holistic approach to dealing with a person's issues? I think that they're coming around to it more. Um, I really think it depends on the individual. I feel like uh, younger physicians and residents that are coming out are more open to it. Um, But I also think that traditional medicine is geared towards sick people. You know, it's not geared to wellness and prevention. There is a really big division because you have people that say that they're functional medicine and they've done maybe a weekend course or a day course and they're putting them on 50 million different supplements and not really addressing the root cause. So they're basically doing the same thing that traditional medicine's doing, but with supplements. We believe that you are strong by design and you were made in God's image to have a strong body, mind, and spirit. You're listening to the number one strength and health authority podcast in the world. So let's get ready to unlock your potential and transform your life in today's episode. Hi, and welcome to the Strong by Design podcast. I'm your host for today's show, Tanya Fines, and I am joined by a very special guest, Miss Belinda, I hope I say this right, Ruiz? Ruiz? Yes. Okay, (laughs) I probably should have asked that before. Anyways, um, Belinda is the woman behind Be Holistic Health, and she's on the show today. We're going to talk a lot about holistic health, wellness, the integration of all that with Western traditional medicine, and get right into some really good, interesting topics. So, Belinda, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's such a pleasure to talk with you and to meet you and um, to have great conversations today. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. We actually were sort of introduced a couple weeks ago through a mutual friend of ours, Tanya Grazione, who's also been on the show. Um, so we have, we have communicated, but this is actually our first actual meeting, which is really cool. So I've wanted to, since we, our communication has been somewhat limited because it's more like kind of work-based. Now I actually get to sit and talk with you a little, a little more about what you do. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Belinda. So I am a family nurse practitioner and I went to school for family and through my journey, I was like, okay, I want to do functional medicine because I had a lot of health stuff going on. My mom passed when I was 23 and I just kind of shut down. I was stressed out. I didn't, you know, I wasn't living and I was just kind of on autopilot. So I really, at that point, started seeking out other help because I would go to doctors and they're like, oh, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Labs are great. No problem. And from there, I just really felt defeated because I wasn't being heard. So I found a functional medicine provider, and we really got into the nitty-gritty of what was going on. You know, hindsight back then, I was like, oh, I don't need to work on the mental aspect. Like, what's wrong with me? Adrenals, gut health, the works with that. But what I had come to find out is it was more of an emotional aspect piece, too. I mean, grieving and not dealing with things. So I went to grad school and practiced functional medicine and got hired in primary care functional medicine. And at that same time, I had my first baby, which, you know, was a really big task. So I graduated college from my grad um, program, had a baby, and then started a new job. So it really took a lot out of me. Um, But within that four and a half years, I really learned a lot about primary care, functional medicine, um, working through burnout, had tons of burnout through the end of it. And then as I launched Be Holistic Health, I had another baby. So a lot of babies with uh, new ventures that I do. So that's fun and exciting. Right. Wow. So yeah, a lot, a lot going on. And would you, I mean, they, I, in, in, especially with, well, maybe it's because I've done interviews or talked with a lot of women that um, are kind of in the, in healthcare in some aspect, but it seems to be like in the midst of a storm and not necessarily, I don't mean that in a negative connotation, but when there's a lot happening, these big things, these decisions are made, you know, and I kind of wonder, is it just, is it because it part of it? 
part of it seems like, wow, why when all this is happening, would, would these big decisions be made? But it's almost like in that moment is when you realize there's something lacking, there's something that needs to be done here. And, and that sort of is a catalyst for doing these big things and making these big changes. So you seem to have done like the big things in the middle of big things that have been happening. Yeah. Apparently I like to do everything at one time and make my life as hard as possible when I do them. Okay. Um, it does build up like a really big resiliency and, um, you know, and you know that when you go through the hardest things, like everything else can be easy. I mean, it's all your perspective shift on things too. Right. So what would you say if you could sort of pick a moment, like when was that moment that you were, you were just like, I need to start this thing, you know, like be holistic. When was that, you know, concept, that concept is like, I need to do this without maybe having a plan, but you just knew that you needed to do something and this was going to be it. So it happened July 2020. Um, wow, you are. <laughs> okay. Well, it, like to the point. So I was getting really burnt out in my job. I was training somebody and I was working more hours. And then I got the virus that shut everything down that day. Um, so I had had that for three weeks. And at that point, I was like, oh, my gosh, like I'm burnt out. I'm tired. I'm sick. Like and you know, I was able to offset a lot of that stuff, but I could see the kind of warning markers. And at that point, I remember I was in bed and I texted my husband and I was like, I applied for a loan. We're opening up a business. I'm not buying, you know, my previous job. This is what we need to do. I need to do this for my mental health. So we'll figure it out. I'll work extra if I have to. Um, so that was the catalyst of me saying I'm done. Wow. And what was his, because that sounds like a fairly, when I hear you tell that story, it sounds like there was no uncertainty there. This was, you knew that this is what you needed to do for your own um, well-being. And it was sort of a non-negotiable, no discussion was really needed about, well, should we, well, shouldn't we? So what was his response? So we've been in discussion about, do we take over the, the, the business I was working at or do we start something new? And I had found a business coach that I had been in talks with consistently from that previous November. So when I texted him, I found the loan, did all the things, and he was on board. Wow. Excellent. Well, nice to have that support, especially when you make the comment that this is something you knew you needed to do for your mental health. So having a supportive partner is just like optimal in that situation, totally. right? Totally. It's been so, amazing. Yeah. So take us through like, so you, you know, you knew you were going to do this. Um, and clearly I, I'm assuming when you started out, it was just you, but now you've got like a whole team of people. So how did you go from you to a team? It actually started right away to a team. Uh, well, initially okay. it was me and a health coach, um, because I knew that I needed somebody on the back end to help with lifestyle modifications to keep them accountable to their goals. And then my husband's really good at nutrition and exercise coaching. He's got a background in personal training and then also as a physical therapy assistant for 20 years. So he's really good at the macros. And part of my old job, I would get clients constantly asking, how many calories do I need to go on? How many macros? And it just was not my favorite thing to do. So he had offered to do part of that service for our business. And I was like, yes. Like, I need that because then that takes me off of having to do it. I can focus on the things that I love. And then I had the health coach uh, roped in from the beginning. So we've really had a big team dynamic because the goal is, is for my clients to have all the support that they need and not get all this interference from outside sources to confuse them more. Or if they get unmotivated, they can send me a message and I can rally them up again. Excellent. So it's kind of nice that you had a network there yeah. to jump in with you. And in this way, like, what would you say as far as, because when you have a team, the whole, I, speaking out of my own opinion, the idea of a team is that you have the best people to provide the best at what they do so that every client that comes through your door or calls is getting the best because as much as, especially with, I find this a lot with women. Um, we, a lot of times we want to be everything for everybody and that can lead to things like the burnout and just really compromising mental wellness and well-being. So what is it that 
in your team, what's, what is it that you provide? What's your niche? What's your specialty? What does a client when they walk through the door makes you go or your team go, okay, this, this one, this is a match for Belinda. This is one that she needs to take on, or I need her in, I need her in here with me to provide this for the client I'm working with. So definitely the burnout and the stress aspect of things, because that is really the catalyst to a lot of health concerns, gut health, adrenal health, hormone health, brain health. I mean, it all intertwines. So for me to sit there and say, I just treat thyroid, it really doesn't look at the big broad picture of things. So when I hear moms or entrepreneurs or business owners or men or women that are like, I'm burnt out and stressed out, I'm like, yes. The people that are willing and wanting to do the work, but also are going through this, that's when I step in, you know, and, and do the magic with that because I have a really unique ability to be able to probe and ask questions, but making people feel heard and um, and appreciated and not feel like I'm tapping a, or crossing a line that doesn't resonate with them as well. Right. So I want, I love that. I want to talk a little bit about that in terms of that discussion, because how much of what you're providing as a service, how heavily weighted or how impactful do you think it is just that conversation of listening to the person on the other side of the desk? Like how, what's the value? What's the impact? How much does that play into the overall end result of better wellness? When you're just sitting there and the person is going, this is where I'm at. This is how I feel. Fix me. Because a lot of people say, like, they, they just want you to fix them. <laughs> yeah. And I can't tell you how many times I get, do you have a magic pill? Because that would solve everything. And that's not the case. But I would say listening to the client is 100% everything. Because if you don't listen to them, you don't hear the little nuances. You don't hear the pitch in their tone um, of what they're saying or changes within, like, demeanor. And allowing them to feel heard and bringing things up to the surface and asking questions for them to come to that conclusion is everything. I can't, I cannot um, assume something about anybody because then that allows biases that come into place with clients and it doesn't give them the care that they need. Mm, I love that. Now, when we talk about burnout, how, because it's, we're kind of, we're kind of in an era or a lifetime of where now a lot of things, when you hear people talking, or at least when I hear people talking, a lot of things, and I do it myself, are discussed as pre COVID and post COVID. And not that I want to give COVID any more attention because it's, it's, it's been taken, it's taken, it's been front and center stage for so many years now. But, would you say that you've not necessarily because it's burnout is, has been, I'm not going to say that maybe COVID fed into higher rates of burnout. I mean, maybe it did, but just how did COVID and that impact that it had on the population and healthcare and just how people may, I think a lot of people all of a sudden, because when things shut down, we were kind of left with ourselves in our houses, not able to do stuff. And probably for a lot of people sitting in that space, it was like, you know, this kind of isn't really working for me. Or I, you know, like when things started to open up, it's like, do I want to go back to that? Do you, did you see in your practice either kind of like a, an increase in people reaching out and, and, you know, kind of having conversations about the fact that things needed to change, they needed to feel better. And that burnout was kind of at the bottom of that, because I think sometimes we can live in a burnout cycle and subconsciously we just default to that. We're not even, we don't even really, we're not even really aware that that's what's happening in the meantime time we're not feeling our best but this burnout thing's happening so do you think COVID and all of that either brought more attention to that or made people more aware of it I mean what did you see in your um, practice as far as that if that made any sense at all <laughs> it did so totally I mean I saw people get really really uncomfortable being by themselves and in their thoughts and with their loved ones I saw people thrive from it because they were able to take a step back and fully just decompress and I saw a lot of divorces I saw a lot of separation I saw a lot of fighting but I think the most important part was people realize how busy and crazy their lives are and how they are just automatically on the go all the time and they're not sitting down they're not taking time to breathe they're not having fun like joy is one of those biggest parts of our lives to create happiness and they weren't having any of that 
So I think COVID really exposed that to a vulnerable place for a lot of people from an emotional aspect, from a physical aspect. The people that were alone felt even more alone because they didn't have people to connect with. And I think that we as people are community driven and tribe driven. So it was, it, it did shed a lot of things and it made, I would say, majority of people are like, I enjoy not being busy all the time and not being obligated to have to go to parties or to say yes. So I think the yes factor to everything decreased as well. And people are continuing with that. But what I'm seeing now is it's going back into those, those old patterns because life is busy and people are people pleasers and they don't want to say no. Mm, absolutely. We do get caught back in that. It's so easy to get into that, especially like, you know, people are busy and people have families and then, um, there's, you know, a lot of us are people pleasers. So it takes very little time to slip back into that. So do you have clients that when you are, well, let me back up a bit. Do you find that you're working mostly with female clients, male clients? Is it pretty equal? What are you so seeing? My clients are women. And then I'll get the husbands that get dragged along from um, the wives. And it's more so that I find that the men want to work on their health when things are falling apart, where the women are more preventative. And they're like, oh, my husband has this, so let me bring him in along too. Mm. Do you find men are, not to create some kind of division between women and men, but I mean, our roles largely in society tend to be a little different. I mean, not, not a hundred percent, but women are largely caretakers and nurturers. Um, men are fixers. I like to, I some to often refer to men as construction thinkers because when there's a problem that they, they kind of default into that, okay, I need to fix this or how do I fix this? And women, we tend to like, we want to sit, we'll talk about it. We'll discuss it you know, share our feelings and sort of get to where, Oh, this is what's going on. And these are the things I can do. So when a woman, let's say a woman walks in and she's, you know, working with you on the stuff that she's working with. And then she, you know, drags a husband in one day, how receptive are they to, you know, whether it's an acknowledgement, or an awareness of their own burnout and tools and resources and like I'll call life hacks or lifestyle changes to reduce their own burnout? I think it takes a lot of conversation and they're not as vulnerable up front with me as like the wives are to start because men are inherently taught to stuff their feelings and to not feel anything and just do. So when that happens, for me to get them to open up, I mean, it is difficult. And I had one client um, a while back who he was a sufferer. He just did everything. And then he had a lot of trauma with his mom. And it just unleashed these floodgates of all these repressed emotions and things that they were having to do that it really took him a while to process it. And I'm like, listen, like you have to, you have to work through this and it's okay to feel things. Um, so they, they are more like task driven, I will say that I give them a task and they'll, they'll do it. Um, but, you know, it's interesting to see the difference between men and women and how they're different and you have to treat them as the individual and not just treat based on, like, their gender or a one-shoe fits all for everybody. Right. Right. I agree. No, well said. Now... Um, one of the questions I had for you was, you know, do you believe or you feel that the traditional traditional medicine or Western medicine, whatever you want to call it, that's been called all kinds of things. Do you think it's better at or, or maybe more actively embracing what I'll, what we'll call holistic medicine or alternative therapies now more than before? Or is it about the same? Like, are you seeing any difference in that? and how traditional medicine embraces sort of that more of a holistic approach to dealing with a person's issues. I think that they're coming around to it more. Um, I really think it depends on the individual. I feel like uh, younger physicians and residents that are coming out are more open to it. Um, but I also think that traditional medicine is geared towards sick people. You know, it's not geared to wellness and prevention but I think they are getting better. Um, I think it's going to take a long time for everybody to be on board. But I also feel like there is a really big division because you have people that say that they're functional medicine and they've done maybe a weekend course or a day course and 
they're putting them on 50 million different supplements and not really addressing the root cause. So they're basically doing the same thing that traditional medicine's doing, but with supplements. So yes, it's not as bad, but it's still a polypharmacy or poly uh, supplementation that they're doing that overloads the system too and can create issues within them too. Yeah, no, I, I, um, I would agree with that. I, I think that's something that I think people that are maybe looking themselves for um, a more, like a lot of people like to use the word holistic and they want to live more holistically and they want more holistic um, remedies. And I think that's great, but I think you hit on a really key point in that because somebody has taken a course or even if they have done like a, you know, a couple months or whatever that, you know, when we're looking at something as a holistically, looking at a person holistically, if we're just saying, well, take these supplements and that should, you know, should start to feel less tired. You'll have more energy. You'll have more clarity. Well, it's not really how much different or impactful is that than going to a doctor and saying, you know, I can't sleep and he gives you a prescription for sleep medication. Right. So I think you hit on a really, really key point again, in that when we're addressing or looking at somebody that comes in that has, you know, health concerns and issues, are we looking at the symptoms and just throwing something at the symptoms? Or are we having that conversation, finding out what's going on, what's been going on to get to like that baseline, that, that what's, what's at the root there. So, okay, if we can work on that, probably a lot of things and please comment on that, on this, that if you can get down to the root cause or root causes of maybe what's the driving force behind a health concern or health issue, when that starts to become addressed and worked on or worked through sort of without conscious effort, some of those symptoms, some of those things tend to become less intense or, you know, they get better. They, they just tend to start getting better because you're addressing what's really going on as opposed to what's, you know, the, what's causing the symptom, right? Or the symptom right. itself. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, on the sleeping part, like I've had that so many times. Oh, I can't sleep. I can't sleep. And, you know, it, the question is why? Is it a magnesium deficiency? Are you low on progesterone? Or do you have trauma that's surrounding bedtime routines that you don't want to go to sleep? And that's ultimately, you know, as we started to dig and kind of go through that, it comes out as I'm scared to go to sleep by myself. That's a big that's a big problem. That's a safety part. So, of course, you're spiking cortisol at nighttime before you want to go to bed. Um, so then at that point, that's when I refer out to a therapist and really work on dealing with that and those loneliness issues and that trauma that kind of surrounds that, too. Yeah, I, I, I really I agree with that. And I think I hope I'm hoping people listening to the show will maybe kind of going through the Rolodex of things that are like, well, I, I don't sleep well, I don't do this and things that I've tried are not working. You can tell somebody that, or you can suggest to somebody who can't sleep, you know, the importance of a bedtime routine, doing, you know, shut off the computer, shut off the phone, maybe have a bath, all those things. But again, if there's underlying trauma that sometimes we're just not even registering, like it's not something that we're consciously all that aware of, but through a conversation kind of get to where, Oh, I'm actually, I, I, I'm scared to go to sleep by myself. Now that's something you can work on because all the bed, all the best bedtime routines and meditation music in the world is not going to remove that trauma. 100%. And how do you get that vulnerable in a six minute visit? You don't. Right. Right. Exactly. And, and would you say that sometimes it takes a couple conversations to, you know, get to the, get to a root cause or get to something? Sometimes it really depends on how much trust is there, how vulnerable the person is, um, how much, because a lot of people that I'll get there to the point where they've tried multiple providers or they've tried multiple functional medicine providers and nothing's worked. So it is a level of trust that you have to break through. Um, but I, you know, I, I take note on their body language. Okay. That made you uncomfortable. Why'd that make you uncomfortable? I'm kind of go into there. I think also a lot of people aren't in touch with how they feel and it's really hard for them to come up with that conclusion on their own without someone like talking with them and asking questions and kind of digging deeper. Right. Right. And you're providing an environment where, 
once the conversation gets started, people probably are feeling much more safe, more comfortable, um, and allow themselves to be more vulnerable. So it makes, it, it provides a space where somebody can actually get there probably more quickly than if they were sitting in a doctor's office, knowing that they've only got limited time. And most of the time the doctor might be looking down, writing, you know, taking notes as opposed to looking at them and like listening. And that's not a knock against doctors. I know that doctors are incredibly scheduled to a point where, um, there's doctors actually a conversation with the doctor the other week and uh he was saying how you know it, it's it's ridiculous that he he's limited to a certain a set number of minutes per patient and that was not at it he goes that's really enough time to kind of ask them like ask their name why they're there get a few like important details and not even really get to well why did you cut like get enough information to really feel good about what he was doing so i found that very interesting coming from, um, you know, a medical doctor that he felt like that. He had similar feelings to a lot of people that when they're in a doctor's office feel like, I just feel like I'm being rushed through. And here yeah. he was saying the same thing. And I'm glad that you brought that up because it's not necessarily, I mean, it may be some physicians feeling their patients, but I think it's an insurance company failing the patients, dictating on how much they're getting reimbursed, how much time they get to spend. And that, you know, they're just trying to make a living and help their patients, but they're also needing to have balance of life too and not work 90 hours, 90 hours per week. Right. So do you ever actually, have you ever had a doctor walk in your office with burnout <laughs> that you've had, you know, that you've worked with? I have not. Um, I have a lot of like, uh, like other nurse practitioners and physicians assistants, pelvic floor therapists, birth workers. I do work with a lot of them, but you know, it all goes hand in hand, but it's really difficult to say you need to back off on hours when that's their livelihood. Right, right. But just right now, I'm going to take a moment in the show to say to any doctors or doctors' wives or children or friends listening to this show, take note. This might be something that can help this person. So if you're a doctor or you know a doctor and you, you know, you're feeling burnout or you can see them burning out, they need to talk to come and talk to Belinda because she'll help. <laughs> yeah, I would love that. And I tell people, I work as an extension as all their providers. I'm not trying to take over care. I'm not trying to dictate things. I'm trying to look at a different piece of things and really do that education, that coaching that they need within that too. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Now I know we've been talking a lot about burnout because that's sort of what kind of that's you came out of that situation to build what you have now, which I think is fantastic. I love stories like that. So would you say that in terms of people coming in the door to your clinic, is it mostly, would you, if you were to like break it down, is it mostly what you're seeing is burnout and then the, you know, the, um, the domino effect of the health issues that that can contribute to, or is there another, you know, is it an other, uh, condition health concern that you're seeing a lot of, what are you seeing the most of come through your doors? Hormone issues. Okay. So talk about that. Most. So I'm getting a lot of women that are having period issues, that are getting bad periods, or that are going into like perimenopause or menopause. Those are probably the biggest things that I'm seeing. Or I get a lot of postpartum moms that are having hormone dysregulation. Um, and I bring that up because it still all ties in together. So, you know, we look at a woman, she's got two, three, four kids, or she's a new mom. And um, she's getting her period back all the time, but she's in this fight or flight state and her body doesn't feel safe to be in a parasympathetic state to create hormones to procreate. Um, so that's, that's a lot of what I see. Um, I also see a lot of digestive stuff um, with clients, but the common consensus that they have is they're stressed out in some capacity, whether it's their kids, whether it's work, whether it's uh, running businesses, you know, not sleeping. Those are the biggest things. Okay. Okay. Um, what do I have here? I'm looking at my, every time I look down, it's cause I'm taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> so what is, if there was one, one thing that you wanted to say to people listening to the show, what is the one thing you want them to know about your practice and what you do? Like what, I mean, I'm, I know there's, there's more, I know there's more than just one thing, but if, if somebody said, okay, just tell me one thing that I, you really want me to know and remember about what you do and what you offer, what is that? Or, or about you, about your clinic, about what you guys are providing. What's that thing that you want them to, to know and take away? We will never allow you to fall through the cracks and feel unheard. 
I love that. I need to write that down. Okay, so talk about that. I find that, and this is my experience with my old profession or my old job, was that we would get people in from primary care or functional medicine, but they would not, they would either fall off or they would get lost in the system or however it may be. And when that happened, they would come back and they would have like a laundry list of stuff that they're not doing well or complaints or not feeling good or, you know, they'd be on a ton of supplements and not able to get them off. So when I created Be Holistic Health, I really wanted it to be a wraparound service for people. It is a membership-based um, plan that I have for a year, but it allows me to have multiple touch points with my clients or them to be able to message me because I don't ever want anybody to feel like I'm investing in my health, but I don't have the care and I don't have that compassion for my providers or I feel like I reach out and I don't hear back or I feel like I am in this by myself. And, you know, and I tell clients that I am here to help your body with the tools that it needs to heal itself. I'm not curing you. Your body's doing that. I'm just giving you tools that you need. And if you're feeling like you are unmotivated or you had a bad day, you're not feeling great, or whatever we started on has made you feel worse. Like those are things that I need to know. I don't want to wait four months down the road to find these things. Like tell me those within a week. So that way I can figure out, is it an isolated incident? Is it a bigger picture that we're looking at? Um, and really just help them feel supported. So that way they can graduate from my services and not need me because they feel good. Mm. Mm. I, I, that really resonates with me. Um, I think in a lot of industries with like any kind of like coaching or healthcare wellness, when you, when you work yourself out of a client, you've actually succeeded. What would you say to that? hundred percent. Like, I don't want somebody to need me, you know, long term. Like, obviously I have, you know, maintenance people that I'll, I'll see them, but I want to teach you these tools. So you know what you need to do if you fall off the bandwagon. Or if something comes up, you know the things that you can do from your aspect of things. And then if you need another set of eyes, I'm here. Excellent. Love it. Um, now, tell us tell us a little bit about the people on your team. So we've heard a lot about, you know, what you do and what your background is. So who else do you have on your team so that people know all what, what all sort of services and specialties that they have access to when they come to you? Yeah, so I have Lewis, who else is on my team. Um, he is a nutrition and exercise coach. He's been personal training for over 20 years. He's been a physical therapy assistant for five years. So, he, And he has a really amazing ability to calculate macros, to help problem solve with clients if they are having trouble getting food in or if they need a substitution. He's also a phenomenal cook. So we're starting to integrate some of his recipes into that are healthier but allow people to have food that tastes good and it's not just broccoli, rice, and chicken. <laughs> Yay! Did you hear that, yeah. folks? Just broccoli, rice, and chicken. You can eat other <laughs> foods. You probably are allowed to have pizza, right? Yeah, well, to a certain extent. It really depends. Yeah. So. Not the whole pizza, not the whole pizza, not every night, but you can have it. <laughs> yes. Um, and it really just depends on goals. So some people, you know, I'm digressing, but some people are gluten free, some people are not. But. Um, so he really does a really phenomenal job with that. And, um, you know, he's very compassionate. He loves what he does and he's been doing it for a long time. So it's easy for him. And it's been amazing to see him blossom in the virtual aspect of things. And then I also have Jennifer, who's our health coach. She's, I've actually known her for 10 years and, um, she's been doing integrative functional coaching for a while now. And she has a really good ability to, help the problem solve to get you on your goal. She's very direct and decisive on things, but she's also very nurturing and kind and calm. So it's been really exciting to see her kind of come into our team as well. So I just, I wanted the best people on my team to really help to support our clients to get them where they need to go. Fantastic. Sounds like a rock star team. That's very encouraging. So there was one when I was looking over your website, fabulous website, by the way. So we're going to get to all that so people know where to find you. But your website mentions, and I love this term, discovery phone call. 
So tell us what that is all about. What, like what the, what it is, why you have it, what the purpose is. So talk about this discovery phone call that is mentioned on your website. Cause I saw that and I'm like, Oh, I really like that. <laughs> so basically this is a call to see if I'm a good fit for you and you're a good fit for my team. Um, because if you are not willing to do the work and you just want band-aid approaches, you're not a good fit for my business, you know, and, and I'm not going to be able to get you to the goals that you need to, because that's not how we work. Um, but it also allows me to hear on the other end of what the clients are going through or potential clients are going through to say, you know, I can help you with that. Like I hear you, I see you, I understand. So that way they feel heard and then we can progress to see if we are a good fit for each other. Because if I'm not a good fit for them and they're not a good fit for us, then the ability for me to progress them is going to be really difficult. Okay. Love that. Now, is the discovery phone call, is that a free service that, or like, so it's an, an initial, okay. And how long, how long does that call last? It's a 30 minute Zoom call. So, I mean, it may end sooner or later because if I'm noticing like through the call that, you know, there's resistance or you're just not feeling it or you're not really wanting to do it, then I'll end the call at that point just because it saves them time. They can progress throughout the day because I'm never trying to sell people like I, you know, selling's not a bad thing, but I don't ever want anybody to feel pressured to go into my services because when that happens and they have buyer's remorse, then they're not going to get to the goals that they want to. Either. Right. Right. Agreed. Fantastic. Okay. So Belinda, for our listeners, where can we find you? So like all your social media platforms, um, you know, just give us all the details. Where can people find you? Cause I'm, I'm really hopeful that after this call, there'll be people reaching out because everything you said sounds so good. I love that you have the discovery call to actually just right, right off the bat decide, is this a good fit? I mean, can I help you? Because are you willing to be open and work with what, what we can provide and that you are really focused on getting to root causes as, as opposed to just throwing possible help at symptoms, you know? So where can we find you? Yes. So my website is the letter B holistic health.com. My Instagram is Belinda underscore Ruiz NP. And I have a B holistic health page on Instagram as well. And then on Facebook, it's Be Holistic Health NP as well. And I'd be happy to do any kind of discovery calls for people. I am only licensed in Florida, but I do have a network of people that I can refer out for anybody else. Oh, fantastic. Okay, so she can refer out. So that's really good to know. So those... um, all of those contact places that you told us, we are, they will be included in the show notes. So if you didn't quite get that, don't worry. They will be listed in the show notes here below. Um, so we'll have that information for you. So Belinda, it was an absolute pleasure to have you on the show today. I really enjoyed the conversation and hearing more about what you do. And um, I look forward to actually having you on the show. I'd like to have you back in a few months and do a follow up and see what, you know, what's going on and how things are going with you and, and, you know, just hear more, hear more about what's happening in the world of holistic wellness and health and all of that stuff that you're providing. I would love that. And thank you so much, Tanya. It's been a pleasure chatting with you and getting to know you too. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I'm Coach Tanya, your host today on the Strong by Design podcast, and it has been an absolute pleasure here with Belinda. Thank you all for listening, and we'll talk soon. Thank you so much for listening to the Strong by Design podcast. If you found value in today's episode, please subscribe so that more people can find out about our show. Plus, you don't want to miss any future episodes with the amazing guests and topics we have lined up for you.